Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up the Apido SN30 Pro Plus gamepad controller with RetroPie. I've been getting questions about this controller for months and months and months. Everybody's telling me that this does not work with RetroPie. You know, it, it, there's a lot of issues with setting this up. However, I do have the fix for it. It's actually a really simple process, but it can definitely be super frustrating if you're not sure exactly how to do that. So I'm going to walk you through this step by step today to show you how you can set this up with RetroPie, and I promise you will be able to use every function and feature on this particular gamepad controller within RetroPie. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do in order to set up our 8 SN30 Pro Plus gamepad controller with RetroPie is we need to have either a keyboard or a regular gamepad controller that's already been configured and mapped with RetroPie in order to navigate to our Bluetooth menu. So today I'm going to be using a keyboard that I already have set up with RetroPie. So the first thing that I'm going to do today using my keyboard is I'm going to navigate into my configuration settings page. This is usually labeled here with the either Raspberry Pi or RetroPie logo on it. In this case, it's both. So we're going to jump in here and we're going to navigate down to Bluetooth. So we'll select that. And now you can see that it opens up this configure Bluetooth device page. And the first option is pair and connect a Bluetooth device. So that is the option that we're going to be using. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our SN30 Pro Plus gamepad controller and we need to power it on. And the way that we're going to power this on is very specific. So we're not just going to hit the start button to power this on like we would a standard APIDO controller. With this one, we need to enter Windows mode. So in order to do that, we're going to hold the start button and the X button for a couple seconds. And you'll notice that the first two lights here on the bottom will light up. So we're going to hold it for about two seconds and you see that the first two lights start flashing. Once those are flashing, we're going to go up here to our pairing button and we're going to hold that down for three seconds. One, two, three. And now if we take a look down here, we can see that all those lights are scanning. So now on our screen, we can go ahead and select that pair and connect Bluetooth device. And we'll see that it now says searching. So now our device is going to be searching for the gamepad controller. And you can see the final option down here at the bottom is APIDO SN30 Pro Plus. So we're going to select that. And then here it's going to ask us to choose the security mode. We're going to hit that first option there, which just says display yes or no. Now my APIDO controller did just vibrate and it did advance to this next screen here. So as long as you get no error messages and you do advance to the next screen, you know that your device is paired correctly. If you do get an error message, then you just have to redo this process again and select that second security option rather than the first one. So if we just take our 8 bit controller and we just hit the D-pad down, we'll notice that we are able to navigate through this list here. So it will take a couple seconds in order for it to register. And then you can see here, I'm able to navigate up and down. So it's only gonna work in this box here because we haven't yet mapped this 8 bit controller yet. So with our keyboard or regular gamepad controller, we're gonna exit out of the screen. Just gonna hit the cancel button down at the bottom and we're gonna back out so now we're going to jump into our main menu. So you're going to hit start on your gamepad controller or keyboard, and you're going to navigate down to configure input. We'll select that option. It's going to say, are you sure you want to configure input? We're going to select yes. And here you'll notice that it's going to say one gamepad detected. So that means that it is connected to this 8-bit controller and it is recognizing it. So we're just going to hold down any button on this controller. And you'll notice that it will flash the name of this controller in the bottom of this box here and then immediately bring us to our mapping page. All right, so once we jump into this mapping page here, we're gonna just follow the prompts on the screen. So for D-pad up, we're gonna hit D-pad up on our gamepad controller. Same thing with D-pad down, we'll hit D-pad down. D-pad left, hit D-pad left, and D-pad right, we'll hit D-pad right. For the start button, we'll hit the start button. For select button, we'll hit the select button. And now we'll do the same thing with the A, B, X, and Y buttons. So we'll hit A, B, E, Y. So we'll hit the A button, we'll hit the B button, we'll hit the X button, and we'll hit the Y button. For left shoulder, we'll hit left shoulder. For right shoulder, we'll hit right shoulder. For left trigger, we're gonna hit the left trigger button. And for right trigger, we're gonna hit the right trigger button. So sometimes you do find that the um, right trigger or left trigger will skip. So in this case, the right trigger did skip there and it says not defined. So we're just going to keep going on and I'm going to show you exactly how we get around that in the next step. So for left thumb, we'll hit the left thumb. For right thumb, we'll hit the right thumb. For left analog up, hit left analog up, left analog down, go down. Left analog left, go left. Left analog right, go right. Same thing for the right analog, right analog up, right analog down, right analog left, right analog right. And for the hotkey, we can either use select button, which is what we typically will do with gamepad controllers. However, with this particular controller, we do have some extra buttons here. So I'm going to utilize this one that's right below the B button. 
That's usually my go-to on most 8-BitDo controllers that do offer that extra button. So now to confirm everything, we're going to hit the A button here. Once you get back to this main menu here, you can hit the B button. And now we can see that we are able to navigate through our collections here. So now I'm going to show you how we deal with that right trigger not mapping. So we are going to go into RetroPie's configuration settings again. And we're going to navigate down to RetroArch. I'm going to let this load for a second or two. All right, so once we load in RetroArch, we're going to navigate to the right over to the settings column. We're going to go down to input. We'll select that with our A button. And now we're going to drop down to port one binds. And now if we scroll all the way down, you'll notice that we have the same mapping situation as we had in the uh, initial screen that we went through there. But of course, our right trigger, R2, is empty because that just wouldn't recognize. So we're just going to do the mapping here. We're going to select it with A, and we're going to hit that right trigger. So you see here that it populates in as that plus five. So we're going to scroll down. We'll loop actually right back around to the top, and we're going to hit Save Auto Config. So you notice that that confirms it in the bottom left corner. It says that it was saved successfully. So now we can just hit B, hit B again to back out. We're going to navigate over to our main menu over here on the left-hand side, and we're going to go down to Configuration File. We're going to select, and we're going to go down to Save New Configuration. It's going to confirm that in the bottom left corner. So now we can hit B again to back out, and we're just going to quit RetroArch. All right, so we're going to back out now, and we're going to jump into a gameplay demo because we are totally done with setting this up now, but I just want to show you that this does now work, and that right trigger button specifically does work now since we did have to map that separately. So I'm going to jump into a game where I know that we utilize that right trigger button, and that's going to be in the PlayStation collection is going to be Medal of Honor because you use that to shoot in this game. So first thing we're going to do is hit that right trigger button up here which is our aiming function in this game. So we see that we are able to use that so that mapping through RetroArch did work perfectly. So I'm just going to play this for a couple seconds here show you how this works. So you can see from this video that this gamepad controller does work extremely well on RetroPie. You just have to go through that very specific setup process by going into Windows mode. Whereas other gamepad controllers from 8 you typically don't have to go into specific modes on here. But um, this was the process for this particular gamepad controller. It is kind of a funny little workaround and a, a very unique process. But in the end, it does work really well, and this gamepad controller is excellent. So we are going to do a full demo review of this particular gamepad controller. So I'll put a link in the description below for that, so definitely check that out. But that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button for us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different gameplay demos, product reviews, tutorials just like this one. Just a lot of great stuff based around retro gaming. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.